Many of you might be familiar with the 1986 hit by Genesis, Land of Confusion. This song specifically is dealing with a lot of the issues that were plaguing people at the time, the Soviet Union, politics, things of that nature. And it takes a very, very hard line, you could say, on Ronald Reagan. But the sentiment, the underlying sentiment of the song, a land of confusion in which it's not clear what is real and what is not, what is true and what is not, that is a sentiment that I think, had they known about, that is, in the past, about the current state of affairs, they would have had their minds blown away. Because if there were ever a time to use the phrase land of confusion, I think it's now. Now, very specifically, I am talking about ChatGPT, but I'm not just talking about ChatGPT. I want you to think about the last seven to eight years in particular and how we've all been on information overload. And not just information overload, but information confusion overload. This is not a new talking point necessarily, but it's worth repeating. It is very difficult to ascertain what is true, what is accurate, and what is not. And a big part of that is the fact that there are so many competing sources of information, many of which are not out there to present accurate perceptions of the reality we inhabit. They're there for the sake of the hustle, or to present some very twisted ideological view of things, which they personally sync with and then find other people that this view might sync with. So we are absolutely living currently in a land of confusion in which it's very difficult to determine what is true and what is not. Now this in itself doesn't sound that bad, well, so what? The problem really, the biggest, most direct problem that results from this is the hostility and divisions that have been sown since this confusion took hold of us. And all of this has been amplified by the space it takes place on, namely the internet. The internet is a place where reason dies an early death and civility, well, basically doesn't exist. So what we've got here is a powder keg of potential for not getting along and really, in some sense, nominally at least, hating each other which I don't think is ever a good thing. Now, as if it weren't bad enough, we now are entering into the era of ChatGPT. Now, for those of you who are not familiar, ChatGPT is an AI chatbot that can answer virtually any question you pose to it. And it can also do things for you. Recently, I've had some conversations with people still in school, namely teenagers, and they've told me that This is across, by the way, multiple countries. They are using ChatGPT to basically do their work for them. Not in every instance, but in every instance where it's possible, not permissible, but possible. So for example, I have to write an essay about some subject. They'll just ask for the essay from ChatGPT and they'll get a pretty well-written essay. Now, the smart ones won't just hand that essay into the teacher directly from ChatGPT, because the style that ChatGPT produces isn't necessarily going to accord with what the teacher expects of 15, 16, and 17-year-olds. But nonetheless, the ones who are smart, yeah, they touch it up a bit, they change the language a bit, and they basically don't have to do their work. On the face of it, it sounds pretty alarming, but I would enjoin you to remind yourself of the times you went through when you were younger. We had, back in the day, Cliff Notes which isn't the same thing, but the point I'm trying to drive home is that we avail ourselves of shortcuts when it's possible. So yeah, we also try to take shortcuts. It's just the technology wasn't available in the 80s and 90s, and so there you have it. But there is a problem here, and that is, as a rule, human beings, and this has been demonstrated over the past decade, or maybe a little bit less, are not interested in data, in information, in knowledge itself. The revealed preferences of human beings have shown themselves to be YouTube shorts, TikTok clips of women in booty shorts and yoga pants and cute cat videos and whatever. And on top of that, the factionalization that I talked about just prior, the fact that, yes, there are some people out there that are very ideological, 
and they want people to be on their side, and, and then they get their little group together and they just exist in that space. The problem is accurate information at some point in time matters. It matters in the most dire of situations. So for example, you want people with accurate information on how to fly a plane, right? You don't want people who just, I don't know, ask ChatGPT how to fly a plane and then present themselves as pilots. It's an extreme example, obviously. And you also don't want necessarily, when there's a serious medical issue, to have ChatGPT as your primary resource. Now, sure, you could ask it about whatever it might be, but the issue arises when people who are looking to create destruction and have malice in their hearts harness this technology to spread misinformation. Now, let me give you a ridiculous example that probably would never happen, but nonetheless, it's uh, illustrative of the point. Imagine you had some strange toothache, and you know there are chat GPT services out there and things of the sort, and you find such a service, something similar to chat GPT, only you don't know this, but it's been corrupted by bad actors, and they tell you a very plausible combination of chemicals, which on the face of it doesn't seem very harmful to you, and so it seems likely this will help your toothache. And it turns out all these chemicals in conjunction with each other are very, very toxic, and you didn't end up fixing your toothache issue, and quite the opposite, you ended up poisoning yourself. Now, that's not a realistic example, but the problem is we have to offload a massive degree of responsibility to authoritative sources all the time because we're simply not in a position to do most of these things, the vast majority of these things. Most of us, for example, are not pilots. So when we get in the plane, after we've paid for the ticket, of course, we are offloading the responsibility of flight to people who are trained to be pilots. If you've broken your leg and you don't have medical training, you have to offload the responsibility of having that leg put in a cast by a competent doctor, one would imagine. If you have a legitimate toothache, and you don't see a solution to it, you have to, in that case, unfortunately go to the tooth torturer, i.e. the dentist, in order to take care of that, and so on and so forth. Now, these seem like obvious examples, and they're not very contentious precisely because they're so obvious. But what about the situation when these things are a little bit more subtle, when it's not entirely clear? That's when you have so many competing sources of information, even without things like ChatGPT and the potential for abuse with this technology, and they're all at each other's throats, and you're absolutely powerless to identify what is correct information and what is not. But here's the reality that we have to contend with. Most of us, the vast majority of us, don't know a lot, and I will fully include myself in this category. I have pretty good knowledge about a very small selection of topics, decent knowledge about a handful of others, and I'm basically wholly ignorant about everything else. And I'm an expert in absolutely nothing. There's not a single subject that I have expertise in. Now, you could quibble about the definition of expertise, but we have a general sense of what that means and entails. Now, that's me, and I think that probably applies to most people. And those people who actually do have expertise in one very specific subject rarely have expertise in others. It happens, it's just rare. The vast majority of people have some knowledge about a handful of things, maybe in-depth knowledge about one or two things, and that's it. So we have to offload this responsibility of understanding to people who are directly involved in certain things. And the one consistent thing I've learned in my dotage is that I don't know very much at all and I don't understand a lot either. The world is enormously complex. And that sounds like this trite thing that people repeat ad nauseum, and I suppose it's true, but it is. Things change. And ideally, you have to be in a position to change with the changing knowledge. Knowledge isn't static because we have to adjust our picture of things, right? That doesn't mean that knowledge is invalid. You have to go with your best guess. One of the more prominent examples in the manosphere, a lot of people bring up all the time, is the dual mating hypothesis versus the mate switching hypothesis. A topic of research and a thesis that the evolutionary psychologist David Buss came up with originally. The idea originally that women pursue a dual mating strategy in which 
on the one hand, they look for reliable chumps that they can bilk out of resources and on the side copulate with Chad in order to get the best genetic results. It turns out that David Buss's own research has repudiated this in favor of the mate switching hypothesis, namely that women are always looking for long-term relationships and in reality they're looking to trade up in their totality. So when they have an affair, when they're looking to leave a relationship, they're looking for a better long-term option versus this idea of something that is simultaneously occurring. On the one hand, you have Mr. Trump paying for everything and then Chad somehow banging her in the back. That doesn't seem to be true anymore. And within, say, the manosphere or online in general, the original idea that he came up with that he refuted later has taken on a life of its own. It's just one example of many. It doesn't even need to be limited to the manosphere. Ideas catch fire online and they become mythical facts that are irrefutable. This example is not particularly pernicious, I would say. I mean, it's somewhat pernicious because it's inaccurate now. But when it comes to really important things like obscure medical topics or things that are very difficult to understand, with something like ChatGPT, I could envision a lot of posers out there pretending to know things that they don't. The gods only know we already have a lot of people pretending to know things that they don't. And they use this technology to bolster the false image they're already projecting. And then they get people onto regimes and to follow routines that are actually harmful. Now, again, in the context of simple psychological information, whether you cleave to a dual mating and hypothesis strategy, which seems no longer to be true, or the mate switching one, which seems to be at the moment the one that's true, that has some consequences. But that's not the same thing as the right medication to take when you're ill or what to do if you develop cancer, right? And that's unfortunately a very common one, say with cancer. We already have a booming industry of online gurus, experts, and what have you. Now, I'm sure some of these people know something about cancer, but would you rather trust some online guru or go to a reputable oncologist to deal with such an issue if you happen to develop cancer. And things like ChatGPT are going to amplify this land of confusion and make it that much more difficult when the stakes are high. Because people will harness this technology, present the knowledge as their own, add some twists and turns, maybe even willfully seeking to confuse people, maybe not. And the potential for abuse with a lot of this stuff is enormous. Never mind things like deep fakes, which are still kind of in their infancy, but that's also a matter of time. And so we essentially live in a time of paradox. On the one hand, we live in a time when information has never been more available. On the other hand, we live in a time when information has never been more misleading. It's just very, very difficult. And if you talk to someone who has decided to ensconce himself in a particular corner of the internet, or particular corner of adherence to some belief that isn't particularly substantiated by the reality we inhabit, then you know how confident these individuals can be and how pointless, ultimately, conversations with them are. And we are hurtling towards a cliff of not just more of that, unreachable people, people that don't want to have conversations or really engage with other people because they're just categorically opposed to each other for ideological reasons and reasons that are related, as well as just getting really bad information because it might seem to us more plausible, or, and this is the main point, the sheer volume of potential sources information is so overwhelming that you can't decide, but you know what decides for you in such a case? It's your natural gut, your instinct. And if I've learned anything in addition to how little I know about the world and how little I understand, I can tell you that your gut and instinct, in many cases, is not a reliable barometer of how the world works. It might be in a very immediate moment, who knows, maybe in an ancestral environment, but in general, it's pretty terrible. And if your gut's telling you, well, we have 350 different sources of information on this particular form of cancer that a family member has developed, how are you going to parse that? How are you going to wade through all that and figure out what's correct? The answer is you can't. 
almost no mortal human can. So unfortunately, I'm reasonably confident that we will be driving this bus off the cliff. It's bad enough right now. Wait a year or two or three, and we are going to be even more confused. We're going to like each other even less, and very few people are going to get along, primarily because of all the things that are happening online. The internet has totally deranged us. But it's here to stay, and we have to make use of it on some level, even though, of course, you can minimize your use of it in some cases. But nobody has a good answer to the land of confusion. Because even if you were to say, well, if you want to understand something, just look at peer-reviewed research. A lot of people won't be able to understand the content of peer-reviewed research. And more importantly, if it's a very obscure topic and you're not well-versed in it, there are certain types of papers I can read and I'll understand most, if not everything, and other types of papers that I'll know nothing about. If somebody just thrust a paper in front of me and said, this paper is about mushroom ecology in temperate forest zones, I'd understand a fair bit because I have an interest in ecology. But if somebody sent me a paper about the particulars of some transistor board, I I'm going to be clueless. So we really are caught between a rock and a hard place. And it just seems like we're not even attempting to address the issue collectively as a species. We're just going to see what happens, which is, again, a very common thing that we do as human beings. We like to just throw technology out there and see what happens. And I don't think this is the best strategy, even though it's our strategy as a species. Anyway, as always, thank you for tuning in. Special thanks to my patrons. You guys are the best. Really appreciate you for supporting the channel. And if you can engage in the usual YouTube jazz, like the video, comment, share, subscribe, etc., etc., be most appreciated. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. May the gods watch over you. Take care. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.